that's what gets me out of bed every day. Looking at the people who've done such innovative things in the genre or in digital and saying, let's try and build the success they did and maybe we can do it a little better. So Don, Spotify is such a unique company. There's so much excitement around the brand, but how do you bottle that excitement and bottle the mission of what you want to accomplish to attract great people to join your team? I think, you know, it's important to be able to articulate the mission and the vision that you have, not only for the company, but for your team, and then make everybody feel like they really matter. And so every day that they come to work and they're passionate, as most people should be and hopefully are in what they do, but they feel like they're making a difference and they're part of something that's exciting and part of something that's really big and meaningful. One of the key things about being a really good manager in my mind is that if somebody feels, especially in a creative role, really passionately about something, then you have to listen to them. And if you don't see what they see, but yet you see that they get something that you're not quite you know, able to grasp, you have to have the leap of faith and say, you know what, you believe in this so much, go and try it and see if it works. What would you say has been the, either the biggest challenge or the greatest success in being able to attract a team to Crypt? People are going to come to Crypt because there's opportunity. There's opportunity for the company to build and there's opportunity for them, for them, them to be the ones who build it. At Crypt, we're moving a million miles an hour. So we can always promise people the stuff you work on it's, it's going to make the screen. <laughs> and we're not even mad if you have misses. By the way, if you go one for five, but that one hit is a huge hit, you're the star of the company. Well, that's the same as the television or movie business. I mean, it's the same ratio, yeah. right? It's just, just takes them but a lot longer. But ours costs much less, and yeah. we move so fast, right. and we get the data from the audience. So I think what people are drawn to about Crypt and are going to always be drawn to in a new company trying to take on, and Spotify is a lot bigger than Crypt, but it's the same idea. We're trying to take on the Giants, and we want to be the new establishment here. They're drawn to the opportunity of not just the company, but they are the ones who get to build that opportunity themselves. That's why you got to trust them. So Jack, you're 27 now. So you started this company when you were 24 years old. What, what has been like either the biggest surprise or what's been the biggest learning curve that you've had in the whole three years? The biggest learning curve has been not to take rejection personally. When you start your own company, Crypt is my baby. I identify myself with Crypt so much. So when people say no to Crypt, which is what happens when you're a company on the uprise, it hurts. It really hurts me and I get frustrated. But now I've kind of learned to let that go. In the first few years of Crypt, when we had no fans and were very small and it was just an idea, I couldn't get a single person to return my phone call or return I my email. Your call. Well, you did, but you're my mentor. <laughs> you have to love me no matter what. You, you, unfortunately, you've signed Always up proud. to, 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 be, to be, you know, be with me through thick and thin. Yeah. But in those moments, it really hurt. It, I really took it personally. But then as the company got more success and hopefully it got a little wiser, you learn you have to make it worth someone's time. It's up to you to build Crypt. You can't feel entitled to people wanting to just help you out. You can't feel entitled to people thinking your content is great. You have to make an exciting business proposition. You have to go control what you can control. And rejection is actually just part of it. You've been in so many different places, bringing amazing success to each of them. You're here at Spotify now. Where do you want to be in a few years, and what would you look back on and be most proud of? I think I'd be most proud if we were able to continue to grow Spotify um, as a platform in terms of users globally, and really look back in a few years from now and see that we have reached, you know, our, our Daniel's goal, which is his North Star goal, is being able to say we have a, um, a, a billion users and we're able to connect a million creators to a billion users and the creators can make a living off of their art, which to me is a very um, impressive goal and one that I would love to be a part of. One of the things that excites me about really what the industry is going, you know, there's so much uncertainty and there's so much change. 
And yet, what I love about Spotify or I love about Crypt is that you really are following the user. You're listening you to the consumer. You have to respect the consumer, and I feel like that's something Spotify does so well. And that's really what attracted me about the platform. Everything is done with the idea of, okay, how are we going to really not only delight and surprise and sort of all those like buzzwords that you've heard for the past few years, but really how are you going to change their experience for the better? And um, if I could be a part of that for the next few years, I, I really feel like I will have at least done something that w was, was really gnawing at me and I really needed to, to do that for my own personal growth.